from the team you can trust. This is News 8 at 6. Good evening and welcome to the web edition of News 8. For the rest of the month, local school districts are under orders to meet with parents over COVID-19. As they get ready to start a new academic year, the governor pointed out again today that meeting with parents and teachers is not an option. You have to consult with the parents. Uh, that is uh, a requirement that every school district must have at least three online, Zoom, however they want to do it, consultations, discussions with the parents. Those three discussion sessions with parents must be held between now and August 21st. One session with teachers is also required to talk about the details of the plans and answer their questions. The state's five largest districts, which includes Rochester, will have to host at least five discussions each. Most local school districts will combine at home and in school learning with a big focus on safety. Today, Jack Watson found parents who are worried about sending their kids back to school and parents who are not. On a beautiful August day at Charlotte Beach, families enjoying the summer sun while they still can. Back to school is weeks away, and for some, that'll be in person. And I think the kids need, need the socialization, they need that social interaction. Ben Witazowicz's stepkids are headed for first grade in West Arondicoit. He says he's ready for them to be back in the classroom. School is, to me personally, is just as much about the structure as it is about the actual learning. Each district has its own unique reopening plan that it's submitted to the New York State Department of Education. For example, RCSD has grades 5 through 12 going completely virtual, so a trip to school will look a lot less like this and a little more like this. And some parents say that's the safest option. I don't like it at all because if one child gets sick, all of them are going to get sick in this household. Mother of two, Katrina Crumpler, is gearing up for remote learning. It was a hard decision, but I, for her safety and her household safety, I think it'll be a good decision, and we're going to do our best to teach her. That's all we really can do. Governor Cuomo says parents like Katrina and Ben will be the ultimate decision makers as some schools prepare to welcome students back in person. Jack Watson, News 8. All right, Jack, thank you. Well, we do have a list of school reopening plans from every district in the region. Just check it out at rochesterfirst.com. A program that provides school supplies to teachers is changing the way it operates during the COVID pandemic. Pencils and paper offers free supplies to teachers in schools where most of the students qualify for reduced or free lunch programs. Typically, teachers could go into the store and shop, but now Pencils and Paper is offering pre-packed boxes with all of the essentials. School supplies are in high demand as people prepare to go back to school. Director Amy Rao says teachers have been eager to get their students ready. We've had a lot of requests uh, prior to offering the box pickups for teachers to make sure that we were still going to be available to service them this year. And we're happy to report that we are. Um, although our model has changed, we still plan to be as much of a help as we can. Pencils and Paper hopes to reopen the store to teachers in the fall. The program is part of Jewish Family Services. There are now more than 5 million cases of coronavirus in the U.S. and at least 162,000 people in the U.S. have died from COVID-19. Some scientists are now saying the number of deaths could reach 300,000 by December. Doctors say one important factor to reopening the U.S. while maintaining safety is to rethink the national strategy on testing for the virus. In other words, to ramp it up in all states across the nation. New York State continues to test thousands of people every day, and of the more than 65,000 tests done yesterday, only 0.78% were positive, a new single-day low for this state. Five people have died, and more than 130 people are in intensive care. Those numbers just in the past 24 hours. In Monroe County, 33 new cases of the virus have been confirmed in the last day. One person has died. Monroe County will provide updates on the number of hospitalizations tomorrow. Members of St. Michael's Church in Rochester held a Sunday mass today for the first time in months since the pandemic began. This historic church located off North Clinton 
is seen as a cornerstone of the Latino community that resides in that neighborhood. The last Sunday Mass was held in March, so this day was quite a welcome thing for everybody there. St. Michael's has offered a Tuesday Mass at another location, but some people have been unable to make it because of health and mobility issues. Advocates say this was an opportunity for them all to reconnect. There has been uh, a mass uh, at a different location, but in terms of uh, from this neighborhood and for this church, this is the first time in over four months that we've been able to come together, and, and, and it's a wonderful feeling. Earlier this month, the Rochester Catholic Diocese announced it was considering closing the 130-year-old St. Michael's Church because of major financial challenges, especially now during the pandemic. One person is dead after a mass shooting in Washington, D.C. At least 20 people were wounded. Police say this incident happened in southeast Washington, D.C. at a large outdoor party. 17-year-old Christopher Brown died at a hospital from his injuries. Police say the rest of the victims are adults. An off-duty 1st District police officer was also shot and is fighting for her life, according to Police Chief Peter Newsham. North Carolina's strongest earthquake in 94 years rattled that region along the Virginia border. The 5.1 earthquake hit this morning about two miles away from the town of Sparta. People in places as far away as South Carolina and Georgia felt the earthquake. Many homes have structural damage as well, causing some people to evacuate because it's simply not safe. No serious injuries have been reported. Let's go now to meteorologist James Gilbert standing by. James, you know, if we can take the rest of the month and have nice, pleasant <laughs> weather like today's, we're golden. Yeah, uh, that would be nice, Maureen, but uh, we're going to notice that temperature continuing to increase. We've had 10 days so far this year in 2020 above, at or above 90 degrees. I think we'll add to that number uh, over the next two days. There you go, uh, temperature trend. Uh, these are the afternoon high forecasts. I think both tomorrow and Tuesday get to or uh, break the 90 degree mark for most at least south of Lake Ontario and then really for the rest of the weekend into the weekend we've got some warmer air in the forecast the humidity no joke as well that's going to crank up tonight you'll really notice it uh, especially if you unfortunately do not have any air conditioning you want the uh, fan going as a uh, just muggy uncomfortable overnight uh, you'll notice the sticky start to the day tomorrow morning there will be some isolated rain showers north of rochester as in cross lake ontario in the north country but we should be dry for your monday morning commute if you are commuting it'll be in the 70s we'll cruise through the 80s and then i think top out in the lower 90s and if your temperature doesn't get to the lower 90s it'll feel like it uh, with the heat index hot and humid and isolated storm in there as well. So the 90s return. We haven't seen any this month. None in August. Tomorrow may be the first. Isolated storms, I think, both tomorrow and Tuesday. And then Wednesday and beyond, a bit of a dry stretch into next weekend. So if we're working from home, I uh, may want to be working inside at least the next two days with those 90s. But I think we look really good. Good stretch Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Your future cast here. Let's talk about the rain chances. Uh, partly cloudy tomorrow morning. Warm launching pad, warm finish to the day. There it is. Pop-up shower, thunderstorm. Better chance to the south, but I think if we get a lake breeze off Lake Ontario, I think everybody could be vulnerable for an isolated shower or thunderstorm. Then we stay warm overnight. Uh, I think Tuesday not morning we could be pretty mild, and then an isolated shower or a storm. Looks like temperatures aren't moving for me right now. But Tuesday afternoon, that's when the actual front moves through. The cold front that will push out the humidity. But, of course, with that front could mean some major downpours. Could have some even isolated flood concerns Tuesday afternoon. Uh, so that's the front, and then we drop down. So you notice there's not a big temperature change here from 90 to 86. But the big thing is you'll notice the drop in humidity. So it should be a little bit more comfortable, even though the temperature is still going to be above average through next weekend. Yeah, didn't feel so bad, though. You know, it's that hot and the humidity's tamped down a little bit, we're good. Yeah, usually we see <laughs> a couple of 90 degree days sometime in August. We haven't yet, so I think tomorrow probably will be the first. All right, thanks, James. And that's News 8 at 6. See you back here for News 8 at 11. Have a great evening, everyone.
News 8 wherever you are. On RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and our apps for both news and weather. 